So on, this is, on, it's, I don't know if I like the uh, introductions, honestly, that's like, uh, but, the, but thank you. <laughs> um, <right>. Hello and welcome. <laughs> now it's just, since the bar is so high, I gotta like now deli to deliver. Uh, thank you for everybody here in person and anyone online as well. Um, so as Greg mentioned, uh, the, the focus is around KPIs, but from a managerial standpoint, not the development of the KPIs, uh, we figure, you know, let's let's hone in on uh, a few things around uh, what happens once you do have them established, and then what uh, and what change do happens and continued uh, cultural uh, building of that as well. So, um, so uh, again, here's what was in the description of uh, what you all probably saw before you coming here, and so really a matter of of um, <clears throat> taking a look at that is the highest priority of the organization. You're trying to match those up to KPIs. Um, what we're going to now dive into then is in this session is really we could go a lot of different directions um, and what I want to do is the direction is to really have us uh, ultimately right at the very bottom bullet here is that's really going to be the case studies an open group discussion. I think we want to use this time uh, to uh, share success stories around how you all have used uh, uh, KPIs to change your organization to best practice, um, how you've uh, identified opportunities for improvement, all of that. And so I do have some case studies uh, th that I'm going to bring, but really want to be interactive as well. As, as my approach there is to use those examples is really um, to first establish, as we dive into here, just asking for patience at first is not in the later part of it, but the, at first. Let's talk about like what KPIs are just to make sure that we level set and we all know kind of what we're talking about. Obviously with HFMA, we're talking about a lot of financial components and my main focus is revenue cycle. but you'll see like patient access, you'll see some operational things and incorporating that in not only just from a revenue side of fence, but operations as well, okay? So um, I really want to, in, in really want this to be interactive. Otherwise, you're gonna have to sit there and listen to me and nobody wants that all the time. So if you think you do, I'll ask you again in like 20 minutes from now and you'll say, okay, I'm gonna need to jump in um, as well. So. I, I use the word culture a lot. Um, yes, KPIs are really data driven. Yes, they are uh, uh, of really, from a standpoint, not as subjective, they're objective, right? But the culture of that is important. Of all of the case examples that I'm gonna be presenting and talking about, it is a matter of they adopted this continued uh, improvement, uh, the culture of continuous improvement, right? And, um, and so the key factors that, uh, that we were, I have identified is starting, this is a building block situation where you start with your key uh, uh, stakeholders. Make sure they're aligned um, to the simple point that you define what each of the KPIs are and how to calculate them. Otherwise, somebody will leave your board room and say, well, I think I know what this is going and this I agreed to this. So make it, a strategic decision of what the KPIs, more success stories I hear are those that have deliberately selected a handful of KPIs and said that's our focus. And, um, and to be very, very clear and cohesive, right? And so define the value and the importance and then that's that matching of that strategic plan session. Then after you get that developed, next level, becoming sticky, right, is the design your corporate standards around that. And again, that's the, uh, the only the highest priority metrics. Um, you have all the others as well, but what are the, you know, as from a management standpoint, from an, what are the top two to five things, right, that uh, you would like to focus in on? Uh, and then identify specific highlights and insights and the, again, the, the use of continuous improvement 
Yeah, and so you're going to hear that from me primarily because that's my background as well, uh, lean and, and Six Sigma and all that. Um, but it's really the matter of root cause. And then you'll see some references as well as that um, as we work with people, they're really the ones doing the work. They know and see things. How do you get them into this process as well? Um, and then the, the apply the data is that we want to make sure that you're turning data into information and that everybody knows and trusts the data as well. So you have some vendors out here and you have vendors that uh, your practice management, your billing software or whatever that you're uh, dealing with uh, as well as your financial systems. Um, the revenue cycle component of it is fascinating to me and I, I deal with a lot of the revenue cycle parts is that we are, anyone familiar with the Mayo model, where it's the, the clinical and you have the business, right? And then where those two concentric circles overlap is where this sits, in my, in my uh, view of this. The integration of the clinical staff, especially around charge capture, enhancements, uh, you have all of that, any type of resistance or bottlenecking, if you would, if, within revenue cycle, you want to bring them into some of these KPIs. It really does make sense um, and educate them to why. Okay. So uh, the coordination of that uh, across also multiple sites is important. So um, that's what the basis of that. I'm just going to go through a next few slides are just a sample. We have a, I have a whole bunch of these. And, uh, and this is patient access. What key metrics and dashboards? I'm not going to go through all of these. I'm just using this as an example because uh, when I talk about let's speak the same language, uh, whether you're dealing with some executives or you're dealing with uh, the uh, staff members or physicians or providers, whatever, having a definition sheet like this. So there's a whole bunch. And so um, I realize this is a lot of words. I also realize it's a very small font. I'm just kind of paying the, you're paying the price for sitting in the back, I guess. And um, there are seats up front. Yeah, I'm not apologetic about it, but yes. Uh, but these are going to be available as well. Um, again, the, what, what we have here is we got the metrics, what is the purpose and the value and the calculation. And each one of these are going to be different. The purpose of these, and I'm going to go to the next slide, that's patient access. We have some financials, and we have some operations, and then revenue cycle. And that list just goes on and on. You have lots and lots and lots. And so not telling you anything new there. It's just a matter of wanting to show this again, where um, you're identifying all of this. The calculation in the next steps here is what's important, I think, in my mind, is making sure what's the definition of this and how we're going to calculate it. And then stepping into it is really a matter of what is your internal and external benchmarking. Um, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, if you don't have anything, yes, we can use industry surveys and some performance measures and there's lots of data out there. But then develop it yourself. Compare yourself to yourself. And you're, if we all believe in this continuous education of people and continuous improvement in process, um, you're going to have that from a strategic standpoint. It's going to continue to build upon each other, right? So um, the purpose of these, this, uh, of these few slides here is really a matter of you have this session of like having um, what do we want to measure? Uh, and, and you go through those. And we do a strategic session. When you do a strategic session, focus in on what those components are and then handpick these and say, OK, these are our 2022, 2023 measures that we're going to now measure. And goes into, well, how and why uh, do you measure those? Uh, from a strategic standpoint, just to mention that again, align those with the business goals in your strategic direction, and then allow the managers and supervisors and everyone else to uh, know those uh, from uh, that standpoint. Here's a direction. This is what we need uh, our focus to be on. Uh, simple list here. Be realistic and achievable in the targets. 
Uh, you'll see a couple slides later in the presentation around don't say if your days in the ER are, are like in 60s and 70s, don't say that oh, our target right next month is gonna be 32. Um, you gotta like, how are we going to get there and, and what pathway are you going to do? And um, it's important for the staff to know that, yeah, that I gotta be professional. Like stuff is coming down the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the pike and be ready for it but we're gonna get there over a matter of maybe three to six months. And just setting those expectations, be aggressive, but realistic. Um, be clear and transparent. Uh, I think this is a huge, huge one, um, is that uh, uh, being in the industry, I've seen a few things change. I, I see a lot more people wanting to know, like don't just tell me what it is, tell me why. And in, so I can understand. And so that management style is changing, I think, in, in many ways. We measure and discuss what is important. So you'll see in terms of some of the uh, case studies, they've incorporated a lot of the KPIs and the decision making and, and also the help with uh, the staff members in staff meetings. And where instead of it's coming from the people that are doing the work, so um, ha allow them to talk and then really set that culture of best practice and also accountability. One of the cool uh, examples here is uh, at the very end is uh, a, a case study where they've incorporated some of these uh, into their HR system. So they're do now doing annual evaluations based on this. So yeah, people are wanting to know how am I gonna get evaluated uh, and, and it's performance related, there's some accountability that's related to it. Relatable, embedded into the team and individual responsibilities, I think that uh, goes to say in terms of uh, what we were talking about earlier. Um, and then incorporating the management functions and also their, like, um, their evaluation, their performance. How are your managers going to be evaluated and is it a matter of are we just spitting out reports or are we going to use them? So I'm going to dive into that a little bit further. So putting uh, the KPIs into action, um, this slide is meant for you all to, if you wanted to start taking this a matter of uh, just taking, trying to boil all of this down and just say, again, involving everyone uh, you know, select the KPIs that are stretching the organization, not maintaining. Um, we all uh, know, especially through the pandemic, seems like a day is a year or, or a month and uh, like dog years. And so matter of stretching the organization and that continuous improvement concepts around, this is uh, Kaizen um, model, is around lean is that what, we do, what we're doing today may not even work six months from now. And a matter of are we making sure that we're very clear on making those changes and improvements. And so we might even have to change what we're modeling. Uh, limit the metrics to necessary and, and common uh, strategic priorities. I see a lot of diversity in this in different organizations and wherever you are coming from and where you are, whether that transparency of having uh, what is your strategic plan and how do you communicate that out to the staff members. Um, there's appropriate, inappropriate, there's, uh, there's different cultures, it, it's all over the board. I'm not saying it's good or bad, it's a matter of how appropriately would you uh, incentivize and acknowledge the good work happening uh, within the staff. And celebrate your wins. Uh, informing and educating I think this is a big one. Um, if we said we're going to reduce days in AR, or we're going to reduce the uh, leg days in terms of uh, charge posting or whatever it is, um, it, it just make sure that they know. Uh, are we making progress? Are we not? Having them start to think about, well, why? And, and get that feedback. Um, timely is uh, meant vaguely to not only be timely in terms of feedback, but timely in terms of what the organization is going on, what's happening in the organization. 
Um, that's where, uh, if you really look at that, how often do you change it? And I don't know, is I, uh, I think that's going to be my question to everybody, is like, how often are you changing this? Is it once a year? Is it quarterly? Um, are you doing KPIs, dashboard reports? And then the uh, last bullet here is really the action item is, how do you make that accountability? Um, you know, we, we say we wanted to get here. Well, did we get there or not? Um, and if we don't, or if we do, the question is how and why did we do it, get there? Um, it, it, and I often say it's a zero sum game. Either you get there or you don't. But there's typically the reasons behind it. And um, I think it's important to acknowledge that and talk about that. Okay? Um, the basis of where I'm coming into now, where I'm going to have some, some sample uh, reports here, um, is I love the book, The One Minute Manager. Uh, it's very simple. Concepts of three, right? Is uh, around the uh, one minute goals. That's what we've been talking about. One minute praising and one minute reprimand. And uh, in that is that, that really having it very clear. Like, are we succeeding or are we failing? And so um, different organizations have different ways of reporting this. So uh, what I have is, I think I have like three or four different slides and then we'll get into the case studies. Yes, yeah. I, I just found a question, you're talking about strategic and looking at KPIs. You're taking a step back and you just said reprimand, but wouldn't you want to look at the KPIs that are not, so let's say a patient access that's abused, number, I mean, when the, how long are we taking the time when the patient comes in and check in and so forth? Yeah. Then that, would you take a step back and say, all right, let's look at our workflow, let's see, and, what is a process? Yeah. Now, where are the hold in this process, and how do we improve it? And that's where you get the feedback. Yeah. But that's when you use the KPIs to improve the workflow instead of saying, we need to do better, how we're going to do better. So yes. I would use KPIs to look at the workflow and the work and how that process is to make those improvements. That's perfect. And, and I didn't plant him at all. But that's uh, case study B is exactly that, is that uh, we, we actually did look at the, the uh, patient flow uh, from check-in to check-out. Uh, primarily the example though I, I, that I'm going to be showing is the no-show. Um, and when the no-show rate, they wanted to reduce it. Uh, they had a huge provider. They, they had providers on uh, their compensation plan was like, here you go, you're gonna get paid this. Saw production over a matter of three years going down, nobody really knew. Well, they had a nearly a 12% no-show rate, and then they also didn't have that incentive. So exactly, it's just a, da they call it a dashboard just like our cars, right? In terms of, it's not gonna tell me, but it's gonna show me something. I just know something's wrong, something's wonky. Uh, and uh, that's exactly what happens though, is they incorporated a clinical team, they had the front office team, they had the provider, and, and then the executive. And then they started meeting on that, and it was a, um, a it was really successful uh, for that. And that's a, it was a medium-sized medical group uh, in, in, in that example. Um, we've all developed, I'm sure, dashboard reports like this. This particular one is um, just an example of um, <clears throat> clearly on this uh, on, on this particular example. We wanted to establish the blue line on the left-hand side, I know you can't see the numbers, is they wanted to establish a budget. Based on the number of visits and encounters, what should we get? Because they had this massive delay on getting charges in and getting payments in, all that. What, are we getting paid what we expect? Are we writing off about what we expect contractually? And then you see the upper right-hand corner, that's the total, uh, Credits. They had a lot of credits, and so that was also like, okay, what are we doing? Behind the scenes are the more of the details of like, well, how are we resulting in this? And that's the that's really where the rubber hits the road type of thing. So that's one example. Uh, what what uh, the next example is? Uh, these dashboards. Uh, we have a whole bunch of different dashboards that we produce based on the 835s, 837 files from each of our client. And um, <clears throat> what we have, this is, I stripped out everybody's name, but 
Uh, this one is, I'm showing this because it's a velocity. This particular client, we had a, pro they, we had a problem that we're trying to solve is, it's called the CLA on the bottom right, or left, as, as you face it. Uh, so 33.87% of the payments coming in were zero to 30. This is all based on data service. Their peers, like peers, statewide and national, you can see that their, their blue bars are much higher. So we knew that like, okay, what's going on? Like, are we not getting charges out, whatever, whatever, right? And um, they eventually get the dollars, and it's really that 31 to 60. So we like kind of open up this onion, kind of peel this back layer by layer, figure it all out. So, um, and I, I'm happy to talk about like all the, the nitty gritty details of this as well um, as we get through it. Uh, and I can incorporate that in some of the case studies as well when we have our discussions. Uh, I apologize again for this being so small. Um, this particular one is very helpful. Uh, this is showing their rejections and their denials um, and, and the reason why the categories of, uh, of coding, credentialing, so on and so forth, and that's a on the left-hand side. And then um, <clears throat> you can see by category, by um, denied, uh, and, and by dollars as well. And you can see that we, in this particular example uh, is uh, what they ended up doing is that they wanted the detail, changing the data into information, started to sitting down with the coders, started to sit down with the providers, and figure it all out in terms of that was an actionable item where this dashboard really caused, not only do we have a problem, but how do we solve it? And then, uh, and so that's again, where the objective is making sure that you identify who wins and how. Everybody in the room had to have a win um, in there, right? The providers, the coding, everybody had to win. Um, and then the, the, the actual entity uh, the client, huge win there was uh, the reducing of the rework. Um, this particular example, we ended up quite a, this is a reduction in the rework. And so you see that HFMA and MGMA, they come out with the rework cost. If you get a denial or rejection, it says, I think it's up to $32 now. I should, this one is an older example is $27 for each one of those. So the entity has said, yeah, we're gonna review this. They made this the initiative uh, into, uh, into their strategic planning of like, hey, look, we're gonna get coding correct and we're gonna get it resolved. This example you can see up here, credentialing was all messed up. And uh, that was an example where they, uh, they knew it was a problem and they didn't wanna address it. So that's okay. That, still there, it'll be there next year. Um, but it, they didn't deem it as an important enough problem. So, um, and there's some stories behind that. So, all right, so we're gonna go over view quick again. Um, anything here that I might be missing, I would lo love to get that feedback. I just wanted to level set here before we get into the, the case studies. Um, the, uh, I, can I ask in terms of, have any of you, uh, do you include these into your HR, your evaluation of your staff, uh, depending on your entities, or is that something that you just haven't done yet or you're looking at? Anybody wanna share, volunteer? Oh, where is the online questions? Okay, okay. Anybody doing that? Um, any thoughts about that? I've seen it really work and sometimes not. Yes? So I, I was just gonna say, in a, at a different conference, somebody brought up the challenge that they can't really affect those uh, evaluations with, with a whole bunch of different employees for various reasons. And so, you know, I just brought up the fact that if you measure Yeah. put that dashboard in front of people, they usually 
you try to affect them, they'll usually adopt behaviors that affect that KPI in a positive way. You don't necessarily have to push that all the way through to evaluation and through hires to pay. It, yeah. it often um, works well enough just to expose it. Uh, I would say that my daughters, <laughs> who uh, you know are just 20 and they, they hate being measured, and it adds to their stress. Hmm. And that they feel better trying to do the best they can without seeing measurement come up. Now, I, these are children, which is fun. <laughs> but it can, it can be stressful for staff when you first show them KPIs and, and stack rank them against their peers. So be sensitive to that as well, right? What you expose to people might, might uh, stress them. Definitely, uh, I think the generational thing is very fascinating. We've seen that shift. Yes? I would add to that uh, organizations like Sharp Health care of they gamify it. And with the gamification, it's like a highly accessible thing, highly accessible. So sure. now they're being stack ranked, but it's a game and it's fun and they get awards and they get prizes and all this stuff. So now we're switching that around to where it's like a little bit more important. Um, I'm a screen belt. Thank you. Thank you. I, I wanted to echo something that Pete and I were trying to get exactly that. When you say KPIs, and Pete, I'm sure this is exactly what you're talking about. They care about it. They assess what the problem is. Then we'll bring our staff in and have them brainstorm and figure out what the solution is. And then we use the KPI as, as, as a spot, as a measuring tool for some type of spot bonus. And we do, we do any, any of our incentive bonuses that we do put in place that are spot bonus like that, we do gamify it just like that. We have tokens. Swag or berries that they collect, and they collect those berries. And it's always something trivial, something small, but um, but they they come in extra for those. Whether it's gift cards, or yeah. something small, or or something bigger. I mean, for us, giving a, a five hundred dollars spot bonus to a staff member per quarter that can change our collection for. I mean, that's that's a that's a huge amount of solution for us. Yeah. Um, and so, although it's not directly connected to their performance evaluations, they're aware of the metric. They're aware of they have to buy into that practice because they're the ones that have come up with the solution. So if they're if they have buy in for that solution and they they believe that that's going to move that KPI that we're, we're interested in. Yeah. Even on a team level, it's amazing what they can do to, with together. Um, even if they don't have to like themselves each other, if they align themselves to success and they want to succeed. Yeah. Yes, you had a so that they're aware of it. So then we're talking about it in our weekly one-to-ones and we're talking about it in our monthly team meetings and we invite the CFO to the monthly team meetings. Those reports are presented out to the staff at the same time so we talk through yeah. them, they see the results from them, I give them to the CFO so that he can include them in the conversations with our CEO. And so, and then we're, you know, we're building the buy-in of our CEO as well to, it's kind of showing an example to other departments throughout the hospital that Building KPIs is possible to do, and that we can still strive, even under a state budget, to, to perform better and work at a higher level of performance. Yeah, that's awesome. That was awesome. Well, uh, it's, it's amazing to see like uh, how far we have gone, and it's going to be even inter more interesting as we uh, have more and more technology integration with data and all that, to see where we're going to uh, be in the next few years. Um, so to further discussions and kind of guide this and we can talk a little bit further, I put together, uh, there's three, um, 
however you want to, three uh, case studies. This particular one, uh, this goes back to just what I mentioned before. They had this very large uh, claims rejection and denials, and, and really um, it ended up be, being discovered there was three main areas, right? So uh, that for them it was demographics, eligibility, and coding, and um, <clears throat> nobody knew. They, they thought it was they had a problem, but there wasn't any really reporting to the level of category. Um, they just had a lot of infighting. They did have that in common. So um, it, it, in terms of data and the systems was not really set up for that. Their clearinghouse wasn't you know, modified. And, and, um, and then they had no performance expectations. So they, they just knew things weren't working. They thought it could work better. Some, but they didn't know how much and how far it could be. And so um, through that, we identified it and said, okay, now what? Uh, we started to measure it, and they, they did, uh, we did a couple different things. I know it says monthly, but we really did have every week. It would give them feedback to what their success, uh, 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 their throughput was for rejections and denials. And then, but on a monthly basis, it made it part of their monthly uh, uh, dashboard reports and KPIs, and that's exactly what you're talking about. Everybody would now knows about it, and we we're talking about it, and said, at that moment, they didn't want to say, like, oh, by the way, we're eight points off where we should be. Uh, they just said, look, let's just find out what's going on, and let's start talking about it, and we can find it to be better. Right to the next one is development of the, the, the targets and performance metrics. Um, they, they, did, they chose to uh, compare themselves to the state level data that we had available and said, okay, here's for each one of those categories is where we should be and this is how far we're off. Um, <clears throat> and so, and then that was really an eye opener and you started to have a little bit of a pushbacks uh, because it exposed a little bit further the like responsibilities. Um, and then they really started to, uh, revenue cycle team, this is around demographics and eligibility. They started to give that feedback to the people that are doing the work, right? right that, that, that was like slide three. Give it back to the people that are doing the work. Not in a punitive manner. They did a really great job at saying, hey, here's, you know, we have this, pr not a problem. Walk us through, like, we see the Medicare and Medicare Advantage programs and all this eligibility, it's not as easy as somebody that, uh, that just new to healthcare, like you have Medicare and Medicare Advantage, like, ah, I'll just pick the first one, right? Well, it causes downstream effects. And so they started to really present to the front office meetings and educate them and giving them provider, or provide the details and, and, and reports back to the, the manager level. And then they really started to adopt that whole Kaizen and, and uh, root cause analysis and, and um, it started to change the mindset of people that they started policing themselves, in fact, to the point where the front office is like, hey, you put this in wrong. Now they're actually doing a little bit of scrubbing before it gets off to the business office. The results were actually pretty, uh, pretty great uh, over a period of time. You can see this is in dollars, and um, and I, I changed it up, but this I, I changed it only percentages to make sure. That you, but this is all relative. The point that really happened here is that they easy fix. It was a low hanging uh, fruit situation. Um, they were rolling along. The, this was particular eligibility, and then once they figured it out, like oh, well we could do that. Like, we didn't know that they had these programs and we were supposed to register it in a particular way and all this other stuff. So what they ended up doing is through this, they backed it off to monthly to now quarterly, um, but they still give the reports uh, now that everybody can interpret their own reports. They give it to a monthly, but they don't a monthly meet with uh, the front office staff anymore. The revenue cycle is on, on a quarterly basis. So this particular one, uh, this example is it's poor revenue cycle performance. I debated whether to put that in there, but like I think they would agree. They, uh, this one, it was a fun group actually. Uh, 
they had, if you look at revenue cycle as a, like a bucket, they had so many holes in that bucket. It, it's a good thing they were just pr very productive and providers, um, but they had a lot of holes. And they brought it back in house with no systems. They didn't have all of this. This is your background information. Um, <clears throat> and they didn't know what they didn't know. They had a minimal setup on the system. They just said, go live, here you go, here's a new system. Uh, no initial reports, data was limited. Uh, again, the grouping of the rejections, your denials. Um, the uh, one that I'm gonna hang, in on, uh, hang on here is the uh, limited tracking of the held or pending charges or claims. Um, they didn't know what they didn't know, and that particular example is point. Um, they uh, had a huge delay on getting charges out, and they didn't know why. And uh, it gets discovered later as well. So again, the power of what we ended up developing, and with you know they developed, is really the KPIs and the dashboard reports. They started to expose like different components from the, you know, the time of the appointment through the claim to, to the payment to denials and so on and so forth. Just very simple, but they just wanted to at least get something started. Amazing results. Uh, they brought in a team of people to help out because they identified so much backlog work uh, and that they needed to get through. So that's where the dramatic, you know, wait for it moment is that in the slide next. Um, but they really also started to uh, do, go through the same motion around how did they get through this is they wanted to make sure that after we just inserted a whole bunch of people to get through this backlog, and that's the AR number there is yellow, um, and the target, you see the target there is based upon, okay, how are we going to get there? And we said, we're gonna be pretty aggressive um, and this is our, our target, and you can see this is, uh, I have the February numbers now, and they were, we're, they're, they're getting really good uh, and, and honed in on what the problems are, and um, <clears throat> the adjustments you can see, there was a fair amount of write-off that unfortunately they had to do on some months. The key here, though, is uh, identifying uh, a group meetings with purpose. Um, you, we had denials happening, we had held claims, we, payment posting was literally 22 days behind. Um, they had the money sitting there and not getting it in, and they didn't know. Um, you talk about finance people and accounting, so they're like, what? It, they, it was just a mess and uh, a matter of the power of just presenting information uh, to people and identifying it and just talking about it. And they really did walk through this quite nicely. And they're able to maintain that now, as you can see, um, there's still a little bit of wiggle room here to get this down on the AR, but uh, for the most part, um, they are be able to maintain that now inside. Uh, they no longer need outside help. Um, so this was the example that I was mentioned before. I was showing patient uh, no-show in this example, but in addition to what patient no-show, we did do the cycle time from check-in to check-out, and uh, we noticed a lot of variation of uh, the, the how providers were seeing patients, and um, and even the stocking of the exam rooms were all different, and they had these pods. So we developed a pod to find out like why are we having these huge problems with no-shows, and we have this backlog of, you know, we have this excess capacity that's causing, you know, delay in care, and patients are not happy. I'm, we're not happy. I'm not getting paid because I'm not seeing patients because they're not showing up. And, and so they ended up doing a pilot group, and I'll show the results here in a little bit, but it's important to say, you know, what they ended up doing is developing weekly reports, but the I, I think the home run that they ended up doing was daily huddles amongst themselves, that they could use these uh, weekly reports. Now they can talk about it on a daily basis and say, well, hey, you know, we have Susan, you know, she's an 84-year-old that just takes forever. We're not gonna room her 
clear in the back of the clinic, let's room her in the front. Those kind of small things, and if you're talking about that and you have 60 patients or 100 patients in that pod, that makes up you know, several minutes, and that's what they started to look at. The daily huddles was a big one. Uh, again, incorporating the, 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 the front office and clinical provider, all of those that are really doing the work uh, in those huddles, really good. Uh, develop some system um, standards, expectations, because they didn't know uh, what, if for a 20 minute appointment, what is the cycle time, right? And so there, there is information out there and there is the right and wrong, in my opinion, of the cycle time. So ended up developing that and, I'm doing okay. Uh, and so uh, we changed the scripting. I, I'm not, I know policies are necessary. I'm not big, I don't drive. For me, policies doesn't drive the, pol the process, but it's necessary for clarity. But the scripting, uh, saying to our patients, we need you to show up and, uh, you know, and, and acknowledge that they showed up on time and run on time too. Don't let them sit there and like, oh, I'll show up on time and you're late. All that stuff was a major, major cultural change. As he mentioned, culture is huge. Um, that was probably the hardest part of this whole deal. And, and then incentivize uh, the team members. And, um, and for them, they wanted time off. Or they wanted to go out for happy hour, that kind of stuff. Um, I apologize in advance. I just want to point this out. The no-show, we had several different uh, uh, KPIs. We had several different uh, dashboards. This particular one is showing uh, before we started the process and in the after. And this is no-show, but we had cancellation, no-shows, uh, cycle time, check-in time, uh, copay collections, you name it, uh, prescription refills, all that stuff. So the, the one that I pointed out here is that this was all coming out of their Epic system, and it was just plop it in, refresh, you're ready to go. And then it was online where everybody uh, had access to this, and they could drill down if they wanted to drill down with user rights. Um, but they were at 11% overall. The prov this is by provider, so we wanted to make sure that we identify, like, why, why is one provider better than the other? And what are they seeing, or their MA is seeing, uh, or, 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 you know, because we have the same check-in people, but there has to be a reason why somebody's better than the other. And allow them to, like we're doing today, let's talk openly about what's working, what's not. And they ended up cutting it in a very short period of time down to 6.6. .6. So uh, out of that, it was amazing what it ended up doing. Now they expect the patients to come from the first phone call New patients are said, we run on time, we want you to show up. Yeah, they have, they put a policy in place that they're going to charge the patient for a no-show. I think they did it once because the, they, the, that patient pissed them off. So uh, I think that, I, I, so I think, <laughs> because that was not even the intent. They don't, they, they are not going to even collect the dollars. As a matter of, it, they didn't want to use the stick, they wanted to use a carrot. And, and it was a great, that was a fun, fun project to be on and uh, to have them go through that. Became a competition. Everybody wants to be on a winning team and so you have this one pod who took lead. Now they're like, oh, pod number two, three, four, five. Now they're sitting there, well, how'd you guys do this? What did you do? It's just iron sharpens iron kind of concept, right? So train the trainer. I'm out, I'm out, I'm done. <laughs>And again, I'll make sure this gets uploaded uh, so everybody can have these. And uh, thank you very much for your time. And absolutely, questions, comments. I love the sharing. I always learn something from everybody, so.
Has it been good? Yes. So, uh, okay, so with that then, how do you come up with agreeable standards? It depends on the scope. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But if you're talking about cleanup on everything over 120 yeah. or over 90, then a lot depends on what we're just going to do, right? So it takes a lot of analysis. But yeah. we've, we've always been able to meet those goals uh, that are tied. And then what we do is we actually measure everyone every month. We have to score everyone in the one to five on the Yelp score um, and mm -hmm. on our team. And then their bonuses and their goals are tied into compliance to meet each other's goals. Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a lot of accountability built into it. So Aligning. it actually caused us to kind of restructure some of the work that how we manage some of our teams, right? Yeah. Yeah. In a good way though. I mean it's been it's been a good thing. But does that answer your question? I mean this it takes a lot of It does, of yeah. It it because I, I have uh, you know, it, it, I, we come in and our guns are blazing like, hey, you want to be on the better performing and, you know, and having, uh, you know, 12% over 120 or whatever. And they're like, no way. Uh, and so this matter of what benchmark do you use and, and agree on. And um, again, I, I love, you got to start somewhere. Start now and, and then establish your own and say, well, we can do better. And that's good. Yeah. I'm getting your files for this month. Well, you know, let's yeah. talk about this. Let's make it quick as quick as possible. But sometimes there has to be some partnership where you have to communicate and say, hey, this went wrong and it's nobody's fault, but let's work to get back to the metrics that we need to meet. Yeah. I didn't include this in there, but uh, I have uh, one of the things, studies that we do is like the bell, gir bell curve on the ENM. And also, then we have uh, through the whole same database, we could say, as a proceduralist, uh, how is that in terms of for your specialty? Where are you in the bandwidth of that? Most amazing, you know, providers are always competitive. And just to show them that, and then, but, you know, in terms of going back to your, your daughters, and, and I, have, I have four kids, and, and they're all like, they just, some of them are highly motivated, other ones like, look, I'm just coming in, I'll do a good job. You know, I want to kind of know I'm doing a good job, but I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And that's a tough situation. And uh, how do you motivate re and reward them? And uh, I, you know, that I know I'm going way off <laughs> KPIs. It's important to know, though, how to, because um, your definition of a success may be different than them. And, and you know, what motivates them? Because you're there to get the results as a manager, leader. And but you need people to help you get there. So I, I think it's interesting, you know, my my daughter that says those measurements stress her out. On the other hand, she wants to know what the business goal is. She works at a restaurant. She's like, you know, it drives her crazy when her coworkers don't turn tables. It's like we're not we're not making all the money we could hmm. turn <laughs> she is written down. It's it's very strange to me. Yeah. Yeah, kids are fascinating. Does she get bonus on an average size of a tab? So and so uh, is on You know, they, they're, I'm pretty sure they're, they're tooling right now. They're push tooling. I'm pretty sure. I, I can't remember exactly. But, um, you know, so many restaurants have gone to this tooling concept. You know, you, you help your peers. Yeah. I was fascinated that, you, that they actually affected the the no show rate. I, that would have I would have thought that was a like an impossible problem to tackle. Uh, that was a, that was cool because we've done almost everything on that list <laughs> in that exact same order, and it, we still have problems with no show rate. And so yeah, that's awesome. It was it is cool. Uh, I, I have a. Uh, Lots of experience in that particular area, but yeah, in, here in town and nation, but yeah. Yes? I apologize, I was late, so I didn't get to everything, but where does your uh, CEO position come into any of these ideas and the concepts, or have you already kind of? 
Well, we didn't necessarily cover it, but uh, your adjacent table, uh, they absolutely, uh, in terms of what's their value, what's their monetary value, and, and just make it small. I've, we, wa we talked a little bit about like having it part of your HR evaluation, annual evaluation, performance and accountability, all the way down to like, hey, look, just positive affirmation is, goes a long way too, and um, in, in saying, hey, here's a, here's a bonus. You know, in terms of that, yeah. Then getting back on that gamification is, you know, when Jason talked about Sharp, it wasn't the monetary value that they established. It was an avatar that they got to build. And that was the motivation hmm. that they got to build an avatar character rather than you're going to get a $50, you know, yeah. bonus. So, because she was find out the generation was some of the younger generation was not motivated by money. It was motivated by something else. Yeah, let's not assume. Yeah, that, that, that's a great point. Like, it, like NFTs. I mean, what what is, I mean, really? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but you're making some money out there. Like, before I even knew what it was, I'm like, all right, my kids are talking about it. Like, I'm in. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, to that point, it, and there's actually a sheet. Um, Love them or lose them is a book. I don't know if you ever read that, but it's to that point. Like, what is the employee's monetary uh, language? What's important to them? Some don't don't ever acknowledge me publicly. That's valuable to me. Slip me something on the side or you know positive uh, uh, accolades in front of my peers. You know, or just show me the money. I mean, it's all over the board. So it's like. With my four kids, I always joke around like I, you know, they're not any alike, and so. Uh, but same with our employees; they have different values, value systems. How do you figure that out? Do you, do you have that yeah, yeah. It, 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 there's a there's some several forms. I'm sure you could probably Google it and just like. But I know I have one, and it's just a matter of you have these employees that fill out like, you know, what's. I'm going to use the word love language. What's your love language? You got to keep it, you know, particularly secular. That's your dentist, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How am I doing on time? So, uh, depending on the type of client, uh, so I work with FQECs, ASCs, and hospitals, and medical group, but uh, HFMA uh, has good data, uh, AMGA, depending on the size of the groups or whatever, MGMA has good data, uh, IHI, uh, you're dealing with your cycle times and, and everything else, uh, IHI is fantastic, and they also incorporate some of the clinical uh, components into it. Um, Yes. Yeah, if you guys are members of that, yeah, yeah. And it's always great to call them up or whatever. Uh, from a revenue cycle standpoint, uh, we use those, but we have uh, uh, internally, and just not a plug, just sharing that in terms of we have the, uh, our own database, and that's where you saw the state and the national, and that's more of a real time, especially it's been helpful for the pandemic because we've uh, uh, seen this massive drop and if a survey is a year behind, you don't, you haven't seen that. And so, you know, now we're under this great resignation. Like, 
what the hell are we doing? So, yes. Hmm. A lot of different health organizations seem to be struggling with, especially with a lot of the folks like staff being remote or yep. coming back into the office or hybrid. So definitely uh, staffing, to be honest. Yeah, not that you need a, uh, it, the, the staffing ratio has changed significantly. Um, it takes a lot more staff now, right? Um, I think the, I, I haven't seen any in terms of like since with given our audience and just like revenue cycle standpoint and finance, I haven't seen a lot of that. Although you see a big spike right now and it's a big bubble coming in the, the patient balances. What did we do with the last two years with our patient balances? I mean, it was just like, they, we kind of just held on. <laughs> and so you see a big, a uh, bit of a spike there. So you're referring to like After coinsurance, deductibles, those amounts. Yeah, if you're not collecting them up front, you see a lot more uh, of that aging going on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any ideas on just how to, how to handle something like that? I have ideas, sure. Uh, so th in terms of what best practices out there, if you could get your contracts loaded up front, you know, unless, you know, I don't know if we've ever, I didn't, I don't think we're talking about the No, you know, no Surprise Act, all that. Uh, get the money as uh, up front as possible, set those expectations with your patients as quickly as possible. And if you can't collect it, collect some of it, or at least get engaged with them to know that you know that they have the balance. Got it. Don't surprise them, you know, it's like, uh, it's, it's not easy, it's not easy at all. All right, well thank you, Larry. Tapped out. We have a, uh, 